So we talk a lot about why biology is so important, it has all these really key functions in the soil ecosystem. But the next natural question is, well, what do we do if our soil biology is not booming and thriving, right? What are, we, what are some steps that we can take towards improving the soil biology? So I think about that in the context of, you know, agricultural management and what we can do this year, what we can do next year, what we can do as we think into the future, but we wanna have some actionable items that we can talk about today. So when I think about steps towards improving the soil microbiome, I think of protecting the biology, recruiting new biology if we need to, feeding the biology, and housing the biology. And all of those things we can do with management practices. We also have some really amazing innovative biological products in the market that can help us. So stepwise, when I think about a grower gets their bee crop test back and we've taken our soil sample and we've understand like what's going on in the biology. Now, what do we do? We got our soil samples back in the spring. Our crop has just been planted. How do we fix or help the deficiencies that exist. So we can first look at the deficiencies that we have biologically and we can look in the market and see what biological products have been validated to do and address the issue that we have in the, bi in the microbiome. So inoculating new biology, feeding the biology with carbon sources. That's you know, some of the things that we can do right now in season to help open up some of those biological pathways to promote stress tolerance. We can bring in biostimulant or inoculant or uh, some sort of uh, carbon food for the biology. So now we're gonna discuss a few different soil health management practices. You might be wondering, well, how do I get started? Uh, I wanna learn more about different ways to be regenerative on my farm or remediate my farm from where it's at today. Uh, or you might be doing some of these and are interested in learning about more. So uh, the first one I'll go over is cover cropping. Cover cropping is a great way to retain soil moisture in your field. Uh, it can also be used to fix uh, nitrogen if you're planting leguminous cover crops. Uh, cover cropping is not one size fits all. It really depends on your region and your soil type. So it's best to do some research on what will best serve your area and especially thinking about what crop you'll be growing after. But it's a great way to retain soil moisture and prepare for the next season. And so, because once you've harvested before, you've extracted those nutrients and it's a good way to um, maintain them, bring them back and can even prevent soil erosion. And then we can start to think about minimizing disturbance. Uh, there's a lot of disturbance events that happen in agriculture today and that, that influences the soil microbiology. It's not good or bad, it's just we make observations scientifically that show us those, you know, how that influences the biology. So uh, we can understand and consider how we're disturbing the soil and where we can reduce disturbance. And disturbance events can be, it can be both chemical and they can be physical. So tillage events are disturbance. Where can we minimize tillage events? Um, and then there's chemical disturbance too. So every time we use a fungicide, herbicide, pesticide, disturbs the soil biology. So where in our management practices can we uh, use other tools or limit some of those tools to minimize disturbance? Uh, next, we can talk about livestock a little bit. Uh, there's rotational grazing, which is a great way to keep ground cover, uh, move animals around. There are lots of studies that show that rotational grazing can increase soil organic carbon, which is really important. Uh, there's also silver pasture where you integrate livestock with your cropping systems, uh, so it's very harmonious. And uh, lastly, there's intercropping where you can be growing crops. Let's say you have a vineyard or an orchard, you can be growing crops in the alleys to have ground cover, retain soil moisture, and it can even be a cash crop. So you're diversifying your farming plan. So then talking about soil organic matter, uh, another soil health management practice is composting. So thinking about your farm, if you have livestock, uh, you know, recycling your outputs, using them as inputs, uh, applying compost is a great way to release soil organic matter. Depending on the frequency that you apply the compost at, uh, that's something that we monitor at Biomakers. We can design trial tests where we're looking at the frequency that we're applying, the quantity we're applying. The last soil health management practice that I'll go over is uh, biological products. If you are using chemical fertilizers and herbicides, 
you're not getting the results that you want or you're just trying to move away from these products uh, one move is looking at biological products biological stimulants so you can think about the crop that you're growing or the crop that you want to be growing and look for a product that has the needed microbes or other nutrients that aid in your crop's growth so those are a few different practices when we're talking about soil health management in the regenerative world and then we can start thinking about the future and what we can do next uh, we feed the biology, we've, we've recruited new biology with biological inoculants like a compost tea or other manufactured products. And now we can think about what do we do in the fall now? Does a cover crop work, work in our operation? Can we do things to feed the biology after we harvest our cash crop throughout the winter or the off season to replant into a healthier soil biology and ecosystem in, in the next spring?